Krista von Hillebrand Andrade, Chair of the Intergovernmental Coordination Group for Tsunamis and Other Coastal Hazards Warning Systems for the Caribbean, says though there is awareness in the region, there is a deep sense of complacency. I think um, because of what they saw the tsunami in the Indian Ocean did to the, those countries there, they saw the images of, of, of Japan of 2011, they've seen images of tsunami impact in Chile also among recent years. When you say a tsunami is coming, I think most people in the Caribbean understand that it is dangerous and they need to respond. What I think is required is many people probably still think that that's not going to happen in the Caribbean since they have not seen it in their lifetime or heard about it from their parents. Um, the most recent tsunami was devastating tsunami was in 1946 in Dominican Republic. So that is quite you know a long time ago. So the fact that we haven't um, had a, a recent destructive tsunami, you know, broadly destructive tsunami in the Caribbean has led to some complacency um, and some lack of knowledge within our communities. But I think the governments, you know, are doing their job. They're integrating tsunamis in their all hazards education and outreach. So when we talk about hurricanes, we talk about earthquakes, we can talk about tsunamis, we talk about volcanoes. So by integrating tsunamis into their their all hazards education um, is, is will be important to make sure that people are cognizant that this is a real threat for the Caribbean. We've had 75 tsunamis um, in the past 500 years, and we have plenty of faults that could generate an earthquake, that could generate tsunamis, and people need to know that, and people need to get ready. However, there is now a more serious thrust towards education and awareness and becoming what is known as tsunami smart. Already Anguilla and most recently St. Kitts Nevis have been certified tsunami smart by the Miami-based National Oceanographic Atmospheric Administration, NOAA. I think one of the things that drove us in St. Kitts and Nevis was a what-if scenario where we lack an alerting mechanism and the what-if scenario was what if we got a tsunami and what if it came in the night? Can you imagine? And so when we thought about it that way, we said, you know, we really need to put certain mechanisms in place and in, in starting the process, um, being recognized as tsunami ready, allowed us several avenues to be able to achieve some of the goals and attain some of the resources such as tsunami hazard signs um, to be erected around both islands to be able to guide the population and help them to understand what type of actions might be required from them in the event that we are threatened by a tsunami. Anguilla has been certified Tsunami Smart twice since 2011. Melissa Mead, Director of the Department of Disaster Management, says it is important to work with community groups to get the Tsunami Smart message across. When we first embarked on Tsunami Ready, we had a number of community meetings. And what we realized is that if it's not something sensational, you're going to talk to the community about, the level of community participation that you get is not as great as you would like. And so we had to go back to the drawing board and think about different ways that we can engage with the community to get the message across. And we realized that a number of community groups exist within the various communities around the island. And so we decided to meet with those communities and go that route. We've started training members of the communities in the community emergency response team so that part of that is that they're not only, not only about tsunamis but all of the various hazards so that they are aware of what they're supposed to do. But as it pertains to the tsunami aspect of it, we then use them to champion and push the cause. St. Vincent and the Grenadines is now working towards becoming tsunami ready and Holder Peters, training officer at the National Emergency Management Organization, says they are working with a number of vulnerable communities, especially the schools. Well, the outcome of this project is that each of the schools involved in this project, by the end of this project, they should have tsunami plans. Also, they should have gone through the process of looking at the evacuation procedures, so tsunami school plan, evacuation plans, and also some signages. In terms of the community, they will also have 
community evacuation plan as it relates to tsunami. Also mapping done of the community so you can probably, there'll be maps erected at different areas where you're here and um, show you where you can evacuate in the event of a tsunami and so on and also signages. And um, to top it all off, there will also be a public education and awareness campaign because the project is really knowledge-based management and also community preparedness based. Ronald Jackson, Executive Director of the Caribbean Disaster Emergency Management Agency, SEDEMA, supports the idea of getting the children involved in the education and awareness exercise. One of the things we have to, to try to work on is this whole idea of storytelling. How do we you know, continue to educate our public, use opportunities like the Tsunami Awareness Day that is coming up um, November 5th, use National Disaster Preparedness Month activities, which some countries have, as an opportunity for going through a comprehensive suite of the hazards to which the, the Caribbean is vulnerable, and use that as an opportunity to talk about not just hurricanes and earthquakes, but also tsunamis and what, what can occur. The Caribbean is not known to have had many tsunamis in the recent past. The most recent Caribbean tsunami happened in the south of Haiti on January 12, 2010, when the magnitude 7 earthquake struck. That local tsunami claimed the lives of one farmer and six other members of his family. Nicole Best, CMC News.